new album's coming out in May. It's called uh, Where Did the Night Fall? We have um, worked with... There's two sort of areas. There's the band that we've developed as a touring band over the last few years. So a lot of the people that have been involved in that are very heavily involved in the record. So that means Lisa, who joined us at the end of the tour. Um, she's on a few songs. There's Gavin Clark, who was on our last record. Myself, Joel Cadbury, who was in South, who's worked with us over the years. And sort of elements of the touring band. And... Um, and then we've worked with a, with a selection of kind of new bands, um, Black Angels from uh, Texas, Sleepy Sun, San Francisco, Katrina, who's in a band called Celebration, who also sang on TV and the radio as Wolf Like Me, um, from Baltimore, and, uh, and Mark Lanigan from LA. Also Autolux are on the record as well, who were on the last record. Yeah, it's a more organic record. It is, um, it's, it's good because it's for me it has a more yin yang feel because it's this, it's half female half male and it's something we've never really done before. It's always tended to be quite male or driven and uh, I thought it was time to get a bit more of a balance. And it just feels for me it's a record that I'm just I feel the partnership that I have with Pablo, um, who is you know really the two of us are being the core members of what you know the public would see as uncle. But we also work with my brother doing classical stuff and score work and, and a lot of um, uh, sort of electronic areas of the work that we do. And then we work with James and um, he is uh, part of our band and he was a bass player. And he's got his, the record feels very organic that it's come together in a kind of quite a more of a traditional um, recording process and a more of a traditional sort of, uh, it's, it's not a conceptual record. It doesn't, it feels for me that each track kind of stands alone on its own, but as a, as a whole record, hopefully, and I feel it's pretty cohesive. We have um, spent a lot of time being very detailed about where and how we were going to record, record very specific elements. So drums, um, we, we spent a huge amount of time working on drums, and we use this bad boy for, for those a lot. And, um, you know, really, really sort of tried to refine the sound so that we got a very authentic sound, whether we wanted something that sounded like more like a funk break beat or something which had more of a rockier edge or something that had more of an electronic edge. It's all pretty much live, and this, this has been used a lot for that. And then um, most of the vocals that we've done have been done with the NT2000. And then, you know, everything from the pianos that we've been recording and, and all the synths, you know, we've, we've had a great use of all the different variations of microphones that we've been sort of supplied with, basically, by Rode. And, and um, you know, the only other mics that we've used on the record are, would, would have been vintage mics, um, which we will have used at uh, a studio that we will record at, which is owned by Edwin Collins. So that's really, so between sort of, extremely sort of rare and specific mics in that way. You know, Rode has basically been the fabric of uh, recording sound on, on this new record and we're really pleased to, to have that relationship. This whole record is a kind of, is a, is a shift for me. It's like the last three are like a trilogy in, in many ways, the way I look at them and the relationships and the way the records were made. Um, this is sort of feels like a beginning of, 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 of a new uncle. We're starting to really know actually how to make records in a, in a much more technical work sense. Um, we were really, the way we made records before was, was like making punk records. You know, we, were, we didn't really know what we were doing and it was more a sampler based situation and then re re relying on uh, an engineer or a producer to be involved that would have more knowledge of, of, of the technical side of how things were actually sonically being recorded. You'd, you'd reference something and say, this is how I want it to sound, but not necessarily quite, quite understood the, the, the detail of that. And I think now between the, the group of people that are involved, we've, you know, we've had the time and, and the, the history to really to start learning. and, and We've, we've now got to a point where I think we've, we've, we've become a new thing in that way and we're coming, becoming a very self-sufficient entity. And with, with the artwork and the way that we wanted to present the record, I, I really wanted to, to change the way it, it, it felt. It, it, so 
We've worked with um, Warren uh, Dupree and Nick, who um, have always done our photos, but we've made the albums. It's a, it's a photo-based record. But it still has a synergy to the past. It's quite graphic, the way the photos sit. And the, um, the limited edition, which is always, for me, really how the album should really look, um, is silver mirror board with black print and it's very stark and, and the, po the photos are all solarized so that they're basically shot and then given a kind of weird that uh, they've built they've created their own code to kind of create this very unique solarization process within the photos so they have a very kind of organic but very high 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 um, detail quality about them and uh, yeah, I think it's just, I think it reflects the, the mood of the record and I think it needed to be different in that way. You know, we, we work with Futura, we work with 3D. I'm really proud of those, those, um, of those relationships. But I think after working with 3D, I really didn't want to kind of, I didn't feel, I, thought, I felt that we'd really taken that to, the, to the, as far as it could go. And um, yeah, it's new beginning, new look, new decade. New, uh, new good times, hopefully for us, and you know. Biggest influences on this record? It's 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 funny. It's it it's really really diverse. You know, we'd have influences from sort of originally we we we, we intended to make quite a psychedelic record. Um, we definitely didn't want to make such a guitar-led record. But we did work with Chris Goss a bit on the record. There's a, there's a, so there's always a harmonic sort of Chris Goss element that I, I love with all the harmonies. There's, there's elements of, of referencing Beatles and Radiohead and, and, and going into quite sort of unusual Turkish site records, a lot of Afrobeat references. The tracks are a lot more groove based. Um, People like Manuel Gotching was quite a reference as far as the electronic elements and and admiring you know what how bands like Radiohead and Animal Collective had introduced their sort of take on electronica within within contemporary music so there was those kind of uh, there was a bit of that influence going on we could, we're always gonna we're always gonna be listening to hip hop records and just kind of checking out that end of production um, and um, because I play house and techno. I always have that in the back of my mind as well. So you, there's, for me, I can hear a song and I can go, that's a little bit of Maurizio or a little bit of Carl Craig, but I don't know if anybody else will get that. But that's, you know, those are the conversations that me and Pablo will have. And yeah, you know, that's like, do you hear that Jay-Z, you know, Death of Orchard, you know, that little bit on the beat, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's quite micro, micro sort of uh, references. And then, you know, just, just, you know, you're you're always going to reference certain people for the quality of songwriting, and and that's a lot of the people we've worked with. And you know, from the genius of somebody like Mark Lanigan through to the through to somebody like Autolux that are just very very, you know, Gavin is just a uh, they're all great writers, and and that's the sort of relationship between Pablo being very sort of technical and and obsessed with sort of analog gear and, and really obscure music to me sort of being a little bit more in the middle where I'm sort of trying to reference where you know more contemporary um, records and even looking at you know what's going on with pop what's going on with with, with the commercial end of, of, of music through you know through to Noi and Kraftwerk etc so it's a pretty uh, it's hard to explain. If you were in our studio, you'd just probably think we're all fucking mental the way we talk about records because we'll be referencing songs in such weird ways, you know. And it's it's how we've always, you know, we just just love music, you know. It's and and um, we obsessively just sit there trying to, you know, listen to as much as we can and, and as much information. So the influences, basically, I like to waffle on, but the influences are very broad. <laughs> mm -hmm. 